I have to stare at these problems with very clear eyes and know that I am not Jesus, but also to know that I can make a difference. I'm in a, I'm in a, a very privileged position as a Jesuit, as a researcher, and at, at the end of the day, I bring that to God. What are, what are you inviting me to? What are you up to here? How can I, how can I work with you? My name is Brian Galligan. I am a Jesuit scholastic in Regency, which is the stage of formation between First Studies and Philosophy. So I work at the Jesuit Justice and Ecology Network Africa, aka Jena, which is uh, the network of Jesuit social and ecology organizations around the African continent. And my role there is to uh, really focus on ecosystem and climate issues. It includes some networking work, some research, most of which is on oceans and fisheries, and some advocacy. And part of my job involves visiting communities, especially communities that are more marginalized, that are more vulnerable to climate change, and to really kind of intersectional vulnerability, and to be with them, to listen to their stories, and allow that to shape the research and the advocacy that I do. When people are coming to church, they're expecting three things, the threefold ministry of the church. There's the evangelization, the ministering of sacraments, and there's the service of charity. And so one of the things that we have to do is to continue to raise awareness about the issues that challenge the communities that we serve. When they come to church, when they want to connect with their faith, one thing that they also want to see is that the church is championing for their rights. So here at the Jesuit Conference of Africa and Madagascar, one of the advantages of the way that JCAM does business, especially in advocacy, is that we are talking about communities, you know, where the church is present, whether with healthcare, whether, you know, as a, with parish schools, or collaborating from these little local communities helps to bring awareness of real people issues. So I try to learn from our network members' experiences on the ground and turn that experience into advocacy messages to fight for the communities that we serve at the global level. The communities that these fisheries are taking place in are often food insecure, they are malnourished, and this is despite the fact that the, the fisheries adjacent to their shores are producing more than enough nutrients to meet their needs. I depend on the fish to get my daily bread. I have ventured into this frying fish business for 25 years. All my life, I have been doing the same thing. I have no other source of income. Our government does not give us any assistance. That thing really hurts me so much. What I need is to get some assistance in my life so that I'm able to care for my children. Well, recently, we have been having uh, quite a big challenge in the issue of uh, environment. The weather has been unpredictable. We are not able to uh, understand uh, when the changes of the wind or uh, current of the sea would be. So our fishermen are really getting a hard time going out fishing. Daily in our fishing activities, we encounter so many challenges, especially when the tides are high. Sometimes, because we lack proper fishing equipment, fishermen drown in the ocean, and in low seasons, we face challenges because it's difficult to catch fish. For the past four years, JCAM has been receiving regions from the Jesuit Conference of uh, the United States and Canada. What we are trying to do now is raising awareness on social justice issues, especially climate change. Brian, since he's coming to the end of his regency, he's been working in collaboration with local communities in the south of, of uh, Kenya and trying to understand how they have been struggling with fisheries. So these are very, very uh, uh, specific issues, but which Governments don't study them, you know. and even if governments wanted to study them, the bureaucracy is just too heavy. 
So what we do is to be able to go from these small local communities to the international uh, organizations um, and, and present some of these issues. And Brian has been able to do that. So I, I grew up next to the ocean. Our property line was the high tide line. And so I would spend hours as a child playing on the rocky shore, in tide pools, finding the stuff that washed up. It is also the place where I had my first experiences of prayer. I knew the Jesuits by reputation before I met any Jesuits in person. My grandmother grew up in the Bronx, very close to Fordham, and was close to many Jesuits, uh, had family members who were Jesuits. I came back to the church really on my own, uh, beginning with my freshman year at Fordham. And so it was really, for me, it felt like I was converting, like coming to a, a totally new experience of faith and of God, um, which was Catholic, but it was also Jesuit. I was accompanied by Jesuits. I was introduced to Jesus by Jesuit preaching. When I came to Fordham, I started pre-med. I thought I was going to be a doctor and that, that was what I wanted to do and what I was called to do. And basically what went into that decision was that I like science and I wanted to help people. And, and that was it. I really never had a desire to be a doctor. It is not that hospitals were interesting to me or there was anything about human physiology that was particularly animating, but that all I really wanted to do was love God and to love people. And for me, that meant being a Jesuit. When I knew I didn't want to be a doctor, I, I still was, was very, um, very committed to finishing my biology degree. I had no idea what I would do with that um, after graduation. And what caught my imagination scientifically was a course I took in animal behavior in my junior year. And it just, all of the dots began to connect when these ecological and evolutionary questions came together. I always loved being outside as a child. I grew up next to the ocean. And so marine ecosystems, for me, were kind of an obvious next step. That remained relatively separate from my passion for social justice, really until I was a Jesuit. And I started to think and pray about how those dots connected and could connect. It's been good getting the uh, support from the Jesuits, especially in knowledge production, doing policy analysis. And an interesting thing that was brought on our table by Brian, because this is an area of expertise, is blue foods. Then how do we protect them and also ensure that they are taken into account in our climate negotiations. Integral ecology, for me, it is really uh, one of the major driving forces behind my work. I think of really everything I'm doing, the research, the networking, the advocacy, as putting integral ecology into practice. And we can think of integral ecology as, as being a table with four legs. So one leg is listening and responding to the cry of the poor. A second leg is listening and responding to the cry of the earth. A third leg is seeing how all things are interconnected. Francis says, we cannot overemphasize this point. And then finally, the fourth leg is that everything we do is moving towards ecological conversion. We are looking at the entire system as a whole. How are we paying attention to the needs of the environment? And how are we paying attention also to the people with whom we share this planet with? One of the things that I've been working on and that we at Jenna have been working on in collaboration with some really key and helpful partners is thinking very intentionally about what integral ecology is, but even more than that, how to do it. And so one of the things that we've landed on are these integral ecology dialogues. So you don't just want academics at the table, you want community leaders at the table, you want uh, NGO practitioners at the, at the table, you want government folks at the table. So one thing that Brian has made a lived reality is what Pope Francis is talking about, the culture of encounter. Brian has been here, he has experienced the African context, been able to witness some of the issues that are challenging us in the East African community. You cannot sit in an office somewhere and claim to do advocacy. You must go out there and live with the communities and understand their challenges. So this is integral ecology care, 
for common home and looking at the whole system. Time and time again, I have found myself in these just crazy, wacky situations or mundane situations and really experienced the, the assurance that I am right where God wants me to be. And that has, I'm so grateful for having had that experience. The question for me is about, well, well what does this mean going forward?